All right, lesson 3.1 today, we're going to talk about different pairs of lines and some angles. So there, we're going to have a bunch of terms that you need to understand, and then uh, we'll do a little bit of application of it. So start with parallel lines. All right, so parallel lines. These are coplanar lines. Keep in mind the definition of coplanar means they lie on the same plane. Coplanar lines that never intersect. Hold on, that's my phone. And I'll get that later. All right, coplanar lines that never intersect. All right, so quick example of something like that. So parallel lines might look something like this. All right, now there's a symbol for parallel lines and that symbol is a little triangle and it's kind of shaded in like that. Okay, so if you see that symbol, all right, that means the lines are parallel. All right, skew lines. This is probably a new term for you, skew. Okay, it's S-K-E-W. Skew lines are also lines that do not intersect, but the reason they don't intersect is they are non-coplanar lines. All right, they do not intersect. Now this is a little bit hard to draw, okay? but I'm going to draw a three-dimensional cube here and kind of show you what it looks like and I'll actually get out a, a real life example of it. So something like this, All right, if you can draw that, great. But what we'd be looking at is this line right here, okay? and then maybe this line right here. Okay. Now, it looks in this drawing like they might intersect out over here, but remember this is three-dimensional, so they wouldn't. So let me get you a real example of a three-dimensional um, cube. So here we go. I have a cube. All right. So what we're talking about, in this case, this line that I drew right here is this front of the cube, and this one back here is this back over here. So if you think about it, this right here, all right, the front of that cube, and the back here, all right, they're never going to intersect. Okay. If I look at it this way, this line going up and down right here and this one going here, they're never going to intersect. It's kind of like if I had uh, you know, two different pencils. Okay, So I've got one going right here and I've got another one that's kind of going straight up and down over here and you can see how they never intersect or something like this. They're not touching. Right? You can see they're not touching and one of them's right underneath the other one. Okay, all right. So we've got these are more parallel. All right, This direction, something like this, all right, would be skew. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. Okay, so skew lines. Once again, on the cube, maybe you could have the back of this one here. All right, you might have this one that's going straight up and down the front right here. Okay, that's skew lines. Um, it doesn't have to be on a cube. You could also have it on a shape like this. Okay, so for skew lines, maybe we talk about this one right here, kind of coming um, right along here. And then this one way over here, run along the base. Those ones are never going to intersect either. Okay, so this baseline right here, kind of my thumb to finger, and then the other thumb to finger here. And those are never going to intersect either. And if you want to look at these a little more detail in my room, just let me know. I usually have them sitting on my desk. Okay, so you can take a look at these uh, three-dimensional things if that helps. Okay, let's talk parallel planes. We've actually already talked about parallel planes in some other lessons, but these would be planes that do not intersect. Okay, examples of this we've given are like the floor and the ceiling or the front wall and the back wall of a room and so on. Okay, there is no such thing as skew planes. All right, so that's three terms that you need to know. Okay, um, like I said, parallel lines and parallel planes we've already talked about a little bit. All right, but skew lines is definitely new. All right, the parallel postulate. Okay, the parallel postulate. I'm going to read this to you. I don't, I don't think I have room to write it all down in here but it's going to go with this picture here. So I'm going to read it to you, copy it down, pause as necessary, um, and then kind of I'll explain it in this picture. So the parallel postulate says that if there is a line, so that's this line I have drawn right here, and a point, that's that point I have right there, that is not on the line. Okay, so if I have a line and a point not on the line, then, well, let me ask you a question. How many lines could I draw through this point? I could draw a lot. I could go up and down this way. I could kind of go side to side. I could make it kind of come on an angle like this. There's all kinds of lines that can go through this point. Once again, if I use one of my pencils here. So I could have this line, or I could have this line, 
or I could turn it a little bit and go this way, and so on. I could even have it go straight up and down more through the paper, something like this. Okay, we kind of take it on an angle and make it go that way. So we got all kinds of lines that go through that point. But of all of those lines, literally an infinite number of lines, how many of them would be parallel to this line? Be completely, perfectly parallel all the time. Well, hopefully, as you think about that, you'd say, well, there's, there's only one. And that's what the parallel postulate tells us. If you have a line and a point not on that line, then there is exactly one line through this point that is parallel to the first line. Okay, so I'll say that again, get it copied down. If there is a line and a point not on that line, then there is exactly one line through this point. Okay, I'm going to make it a dotted line. There is exactly one line through that point that is parallel to the given line. All right, that's the parallel postulate. Now, perpendicular postulate says almost the exact same thing, but obviously we're talking perpendicular instead. So once again, we've got all kinds of lines that can go through this point. But of all of those different lines, how many of them would be perpendicular to this one down here? Well, once again, hopefully you'd understand that there's only one, okay? And it would be like that, okay? So perpendicular postulate says if there is a line and a point not on that line, then there is exactly one line that goes through this point that is perpendicular to the first line. Okay, so that's what the perpendicular postulate says. If there is a line and a point not on that line, then there is exactly one line through this point that is perpendicular to the first line. All right? Okay, um, next page. We got five different types of lines that I want you to know. Parallel, skew, perpendicular, and then I've got two down below here we'll get to in a second. We already talked about parallel today. So parallel lines are coplanar lines. Keep in mind, you have to put that word coplanar in there. Coplanar lines that do not intersect. Okay. Skew lines, remember, are non-coplanar lines. They also do not intersect. Okay. You can't have non-coplanar lines that do intersect. Okay. So non-coplanar lines and they do not intersect. Perpendicular lines we talked about before, these are lines that intersect, and hopefully you remember that they intersect how? They intersect at what kind of angle? All right, they intersect at a right angle. Okay. Now, a new term here, oblique. Okay. This is lines that intersect, but not at a right angle. Lines that intersect, but not at a right angle. Now, this is what we usually think of when we uh, deal with vertical angles. Okay, so I'll draw you a quick picture. So this would be some oblique lines. So there's one line, and then maybe the other one is something like this. Okay, so they do intersect here at this point, all right, but it's definitely not at a right angle. Okay, coincident lines. This one is not in your book. I don't know, I don't remember if oblique is in your book either, but I expect you to know them. Coincident is not in your book, but I do expect you to know it. These are lines, this definition is going to seem a little weird at first, lines that are actually the exact same line. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for example, I say line AB and line CD. Now, line AB and CD, if that's all I tell you about them, they might be parallel. They don't have any points in common, necessarily. Uh, they might be perpendicular, though. It's possible they could meet. They could be skew. They could be oblique or whatever. But if I then draw it out and I show you that it looks like this, all right, you'll see that it's the exact same line. Line AB is this line. It goes through points A and B. Line CD is also this line. It goes through points C and D. It's the exact same line. It's just named a couple different ways. Okay, so that's what coincident means. We don't use it a lot. We do see it in Algebra 2 every now and then. You'll get a, a, a set of equations that you're trying to solve, and the answer will be that actually the lines that you were given were the exact same lines. They're coincident lines. All right? So, um, five terms there that you need to know. Parallel, skew, perpendicular, oblique, and coincidence. So make sure you know those five terms. All right, lastly, 
this picture right here. So I want you to go ahead and copy something similar to that on your picture. These two lines here do not need to be parallel. Okay. Later on, when we get farther into chapter three, they will be parallel, but for right now they don't have to be. And then there's just a line that kind of crosses through those two. Okay, so copy that picture down real quick, and I'm gonna give you the first term. All right. And the first term is transversal. Okay, transversal. A transversal is a line that crosses two other coplanar lines. A line that crosses or intersects, I'm going to use the word intersect here, intersects two other coplanar lines. So you can't have um, the first and second line, the ones that might be parallel, you can't have them be on different planes and maybe skew or something like that. Okay, so they have to be coplanar and then this one crosses through both of them. So this one right here, this kind of diagonal looking one, that's our transversal. Okay, because it crosses the other two. All right, now there are a bunch of different angles that are formed here. There's actually eight of them, so I'm gonna go ahead and number them. One, two, three, four up top. And then we're gonna do a five, six, seven, eight down below. All right. The first angles we have are what are called corresponding angles. These are angles in the same position. Now, what do I mean by same position? Well, there's a couple different possibilities for position. Okay, we could say something like top. Okay, one and two are in the top, five and six are in the top. I don't consider three and four in the top because if I cover this up, we're talking just this section. One and two are in the top, three and four are in the bottom. If we cover this up, five and six are in the top, seven or eight are in the bottom. Okay, we could talk about the right side. So two and three are on the right side, six and seven are on the right side. One and four are on the left, five and eight are on the left. So for the same position, we'd say something like top right. So which angle up here is in the top right? Well, that'd be angle two. Which angle here is in the top right? Well, that'd be angle six. So angle two and angle six are considered corresponding. Okay, angle two and angle six would be considered corresponding. I want you guys to try to write down another set of angles that you think would be considered corresponding. All right, I'll give you a, just a couple seconds to write that down real quick. So another set of angles that would be considered corresponding. All right, there's actually a couple possibilities. You might have said angle one and angle five. Okay, they're both in the top left. Okay, you might have said angle three and angle seven. Okay, angle three and angle seven we would say are in the bottom right or angle four and angle eight. Angle four and angle eight would be considered in the bottom left, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Alternate interior angles, alternate interior. Okay, interior tells that they're, they're inside. What does that mean, inside? It means in between these parallel lines, or, well, eventually what's going to be parallel. They're not parallel right now. So one and two are outside. They're way up here. Seven and eight are too far down below. So we're, we've narrowed it down to those ones. Those are interior. They're in between these two lines, okay? So kind of getting rid of the one and the two and the seven and the eight. So we're only looking at those angles. Alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal, okay? So I can't do three and six. They're on the same side. I can't do four and five. They're on the same side. So I could do three and four maybe. They're on opposite sides or five and six are on opposite sides, but we already called these a linear pair a long time ago, so we're not gonna give them a new name. So alternate interior really means they're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're in different sections. This section up here, this section down here. So three and five would be considered alternate interior. Okay, alternate interior. So what do you think the other one is besides three and five? Okay, for alternate interior. And they would have to be four and six, okay? So let me give you a definition that you can write down for alternate interior. They are in between the two lines. Okay, they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, and how do we tell that they're not like three and four? Okay, they're not a linear pair. All right. All right, two more and we're almost, right, we're almost done. So we just got two left. Alternate exterior, very, very similar. So instead of in between the two lines, they're outside the two lines. Okay, so going back up to our picture, outside the two lines would give me one and two and seven and eight. Okay, those are outside the two lines. Alternate still means opposite sides of the transversal. 
opposite sides of the transversal. And then once again, they cannot be a linear pair. All right, cannot be a linear pair. So let's look at that in our picture here. Okay, which ones would be outside, opposite sides of the transversal, and not a linear pair? So we can't use three and four, kind of cover them up, they're inside. Can't use five and six, they're inside. So we're using one and two and seven and eight. Opposite sides of the transversal could be one and which one? Can't be a linear pair, remember, so it's gotta be one and seven. Okay, that would be an option. And the other option would be two and eight. Okay, so one and seven or two and eight. All right, so we got that written down right here. Okay, last one, consecutive interior. So let's go back to interior, okay? In between the two lines, okay, but here they're on the same side of the transversal, okay, same side of the transversal, all right, so look at our picture, all right, we've got to use inside in between, so I can't use one and two, all right, I can't use seven and eight, they're outside. So I've got just those options. Which ones are on the same side of the transversal? Now the transversal is this one coming up and down. So three and six are on the same side, and then four and five are also on the same side. So let's write those down. Three and six, and we could do four and five. All right, that's it for our terms from lesson 3.1. So you need to know these terms because we're gonna start using them when we get to lesson 3.2. All right, and farther into the chapter. All right, that's it for lesson 3.1. Rewind, pause if you need to go back and get any of those uh, definitions a little bit better. All right, I know I went through these definitions a little bit fast at the end, so go back and just pause, write those things down if you need to, but make sure you have good notes. Jot down any questions you have so you can ask me in class in the next couple of days, all right?